The Force will be with you. Always. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Star Wars Meg, here to provide you with all of the news from a galaxy far, far away, and to provide you with another Mandalorian Season 2 update. But before I get into the news guys, please may I ask you to hit like down below, to subscribe to my channel if you're new, and also please consider becoming a patron on Patreon. But without further ado, let's get into the news. So first of all, I want to speak about this rumoured second trailer for The Mandalorian Season 2. So if you guys remember a couple of days ago, I reported on the fact that Maxine Park, who's the trailer producer at Disney, how she posted on her Twitter page a teaser gif, which was about the Mandalorian. Now, the last time she did this, we got the first trailer 24 hours later. But with this tweet, it does seem to have all been for nothing because we still haven't received this rumored second trailer and it could turn out that there isn't one. I have heard rumours from other YouTubers that it could drop on the 15th or between now and the 15th, but I don't know how credible this is, so what I will say is to avoid all disappointment, there probably will not be a second trailer for The Mandalorian, and if there is, it'll probably just be bits and pieces cut together to make a shortened version of the first trailer. I know that Star Wars and Lucasfilm tend to do this before big projects, and if I'm being completely honest, there is a difference between Season 1 and Season 2. The reason there were multiple trailers for Season 1 is because it was a brand new project that we hadn't seen anything of before, so they really needed to hype it up. As for Season 2, us the fans have already done that and have been doing that over the last few weeks and months, so I don't see why they would release a second trailer, but you know I could be wrong, they might release one, but all I'm saying is, to avoid disappointment, just assume that Season 2's first trailer is the only one we're going to get and then we can just expect Season 2 to drop in 19 days time. So now let's move on to our first actual news article and this one again is about The Mandalorian Season 2 and it states The Mandalorian concept art reveals new look at Baby Din Djarin. Star Wars The Mandalorian is finally returning at the end of the month and fans are eager to find out what's in store for Mando and Baby Yoda. Recently, a Twitter user by the name of John Marie Marcias shared some concept art of young Mando from the Art of Star Wars, The Mandalorian book. And if you look closely, the concept art is of Din Djarin being rescued by Death Watch. It's the mysterious Mandalorian figure from Death Watch who has not yet been identified in the season. And this is from the two-page spread in the Art of Star Wars, Mandalorian book. So that is all I have to really say on that issue. It's a very cool scene and it gives us a little bit more insight into that famous scene from season one where we see uh, child Din Djarin being rescued. And so we move on to our next news story, again about The Mandalorian Season 2, and this is basically an analysis and breakdown of the recent announcement about which directors are going to write and direct which episodes for Season 2. So this is about the new directors that we're going to get in Season 2. And according to this article by Fansided, it states, this is where things get interesting. The new directors for Season 2 are Peyton Reed, Robert Rodriguez, series co-star Carl Weathers, and series creator John Favreau. Reed has a handful of movie credits to his name, but he's most recently known for helming both Ant-Man movies for Marvel, as well as the upcoming sequel. Carl Weathers, who plays Grief Cargo directing an episode, is an exciting thought. He currently co-stars on the show and is the leader of the Bounty Hunters Guild on Navarro, who plays an important role in Mando Season 1 adventures and confrontations. Taika Waititi pulled double duty as both star and director in last season's finale, which was arguably the best episode of the series so far. Hopefully Carl Weathers can have a similar directorial debut given his experience on the other side of the camera. And finally we have John Favreau who is obviously the series creator. Favreau's history on The Clone Wars could be reason to guess that he'll be involved in a Mandalorian heavy episode of season 2. Perhaps an episode where fans learn more about how Moff Gideon acquired the Darksaber or where Bo-Katan makes her rumoured live action debut. It is encouraging that the team behind The Mandalorian is confident enough to take risks by bringing in new directors rather than sticking to ones that worked in season 1. One of the strengths of the first season was that each creator got to put their own spin on the series, making each episode a refreshing experience. So what do you guys think about the directors for season 2? I think they are all extremely talented. And I don't think we have anything to worry about when it comes to season two's writing, plot and all of that kind of thing. And if I'm being completely honest with you guys, this is the first time in a long time that I've had confidence in Lucasfilm. And, you know, I put complete faith in them at this point to deliver a fantastic season two, three and four of The Mandalorian. And so from The Mandalorian, we move on to talk about Kenobi. And this is the biggest piece of news about the miniseries that we've had since it was first announced. And this is that it's been confirmed that it's going to be filmed in March. 
Lucasfilm's Kenobi could be an early release than initially thought. Series led Ewan McGregor has confirmed that as of now the production is fully expected to start principal photography next March. In a virtual chat during a recent episode of Graham Norton, the Star Wars superstar confirmed the series is very much about his character hiding out from the Empire in the years between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope. And that is when Ewan McGregor confirmed that he's going to start filming his part on the series. He states, we start shooting it in March next year. So the chat then dove into the content of the series as a guest asked McGregor how much closer he'll be to Alec Guinness's portrayal in Star Wars Episode 4 A New Hope, now that both the actor and character are significantly older than their previous appearances. He stated, the fun thing about doing them in the first place when I was much younger was trying to imagine Alec Guinness and how he would play these streams as a younger guy. It led me to watch a lot of his earlier work when I hadn't really seen them before. Brilliant movies, wonderful films he'd been in, and I just had such great time studying him and studying his movies. I don't really have much to say about this. I'm hyped for the Kenobi series, as well as Cassian Andor and obviously The Mandalorian Season 2, and I think it's a really exciting new direction for Star Wars, and I'm fascinated to see what Obi-Wan got up to on Tatooine during his exile after Revenge of the Sith, and you can't really doubt Ewan McGregor's abilities to play Obi-Wan. He's phenomenal, and now that he is closer to Alec Guinness's age, we're just going to see a much more mature, refined appearance from him as Obi-Wan. So yeah, great news for Kenobi, great news for the Star Wars franchise, and now now let's move on to our final article. So this final piece is about the 10 most exciting Star Wars projects in development. I really like this article because it really gets you hyped for the way that Star Wars is going in terms of a franchise and a lot of exciting things to look forward to. When the Skywalker saga ended, a lot of fans felt like the nostalgia was dead and you know there wasn't too much to look forward to, but now it's being reborn and I think The Mandalorian Season 2 is driving that, you know, that hype that the Star Wars fan base has. So let's now talk about the 10 most exciting Star Wars projects in development. Number 10, The Bad Batch. Dave Filoni, Athena Portillo, Brad Rao and Jennifer Corbett are executive producing a sequel series to The Clone Wars that will debut on Disney Plus in 2021. At number 9, we have Kevin Feige's movie. Kevin Feige, the mastermind behind the Marvel Cinematic Universe, is going to produce a Star Wars movie with Kathleen Kennedy. The film itself should come out between 2024 to 2025. Number eight is obviously the Kenobi series. At number seven, we have Ryan Johnson's trilogy. During the production of The Last Jedi, Ryan Johnson pitched a Star Wars trilogy to Lucasfilm that was completely unrelated to the Skywalkers, and the studio hired him to make it happen. So as for when this can be released, no one's really sure yet because they're still mapping out the future of the Star Wars franchise. Next at number six, we have the game, which is Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga, which is set to hit shelves in 2021. At number five, we have Leslie Headland's female-led Disney Plus series. Leslie Headland has been confirmed to be working on a Star Wars series for Disney Plus. Nothing has been revealed about the plot, but apparently it's female-centric. At number four, we have the Cassian Andor series, which follows the character from Rogue One. At number three, we have The High Republic. At number two, we have Taika Waititi's movie. At long last, Taika Waititi revealed that he'll be directing a new Star Wars movie. Again, no one's really sure when this can be released. And finally, at number one, we have The Mandalorian season two, three, and four. So season two is just around the corner, guys. I'm extremely hyped, as I'm sure you are. That is all of the news I have for you guys today. I really hope you enjoyed my video. If you did, please give me a big fat thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you're new. And I will see you tomorrow. I'm Star Wars Meg.